Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss 14th chapter in our CBSC curriculum of grade 10 that is statistics. See, you learned about statistics, um, if I am not wrong, right from 6th grade onwards, like in the form of data handling and measures, mean, median, mode. Of course, you learn uh, even in grade 9 also about this. And in this module, we are going to discuss about how to find arithmetic mean, median and mode of course, they are called measures of central tendencies of a group data by various methods. And before that, we will have a quick recap about what are all we learnt in the concept called statistics. What do you mean by statistics basically? And what is the use of this concept statistics? Of course, everybody is aware that statistics is very, very much important, useful, important and useful, um, you know branch of mathematics used in several fields. In every single field, statistics will be there. So, what do you mean by statistics? Statistics means collection and classification of data. So, how effectively you can classify the data? How effectively you can utilize the data? So, that way you can give more, much more information regarding that. Okay. So, in this statistics, the name statistics of course you know about this uh, like who introduced otherwise who worked on the concept called statistics whose contribution is endless and who is named as father of statistics sir ronald a fisher his name is sir ronald a fisher named as father of statistics Sir Ronald A. Fisher. So, statistics means collection and classification of data. Right? So, in how many ways we can collect the data? When we are collecting the data, it can be primarily collecting the data or secondarily collecting the data. So, that is why there are two types of data. They are primary data as well as secondary data. Of course, they are called raw data, otherwise rough data, otherwise ungrouped data. And with the help of that raw data, we get much more information by classifying the data. So, that is what called classified data or group data. Of course, we already discussed all these things. So, in our grade 10 statistics chapter, we have the concepts called measures of central analysis. There are three measures of central analysis. The first one is arithmetic mean and second one is mode and third one is median. Okay. So, how to find arithmetic mean, mode and median for a group data and after that, what are statistical graphs? So, here particularly about median, we discuss about a statistical graph that is called OGU. What do you call that? OGU. OGU is nothing but it is a statistical graph. So, with the help of this OGU graphs, we can easily estimate what is median of the given group data without actually finding median of the data. So, that is what is the importance of this OZU. So, let us try to get into understand what is mean, what is median, what is mode of group data as well as ungrouped data. If you want to observe this, we have statistics. In this statistics, we talk about measures of central tendencies. So, majorly about mean, median, mode. So, in this arithmetic mean, median, mode, how do we find arithmetic mean? How do we find median? How do we find mode? Coming to arithmetic mean, there are methods. So, what are those methods? Direct method. Direct method in the sense, arithmetic mean is equal to sum of observations divided by total number of observations. That is what is the arithmetic mean of an ungrouped data. But with the help of that group data, by using same set of formulas, we can find what is arithmetic mean that is what called a direct method. Okay? And the second one is shortcut method. What is the shortcut method is all about? That is what we are going to discuss. And then step deviation method. 
step deviation method and one more is that is called mean deviation method is also there in order to find arithmetic mean of a group data and coming to median. So, in this median of course, we have a particular formula to find out median of a group data and as we discussed earlier, we can find out median of a group data without actually using the formula just by drawing the graph that is what called a statistical graph then also we can obtain median of the group data and similarly mode of the group data. We know about what do you mean by mode of a group data otherwise mode of an ungrouped data when you call it as mode of an ungrouped data means whatever the observation or observations occur more frequently. So, that observation or observations are said to be mode. So, for the given data mode may or may not exist. For example, if I take the numbers set of all natural numbers from 1 to 100, what is mode of the data? From 1 to 100 natural numbers there is no number repeated. So, that is why for that particular data there is no mode. For example, if I give you the data that 1 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, what is mode of the data? 1 repeated twice that is why 1 is said to be mode of the data. So, and suppose my data is 1 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then for this particular data, 1 repeated twice as well as 2 also repeated twice. So, what does it mean? It means there are 2 numbers repeated same number of times. So, it means 1 comma 2 both are said to be modes of the data. So, by this discussion, we can understand one thing that for the given data, mode may or may not exist. If mode exists, it may or may not be unique. It means the data may have one mode or two modes or three modes or many number of modes as per the given data, right? And uh, suppose if a data consists of only one mode, then that data is said to be unimodal data. If a data consists of one mode or a single mode, then it is said to be unimodal data. Suppose if a data has two modes, then it is said to be bimodal data, understand? And uh, there is a particular method in order to find mode of the data also. So, this is what is about the flow chart that we are going to discuss in the concept called statistics. And if you observe here arithmetic mean, we already discussed about this in grade 9 about ungrouped data. See, ungrouped data otherwise raw data. So, for a raw data, what do you mean by mean, what do you mean by median and what do you mean by mode? For a raw data otherwise ungrouped data, arithmetic mean is equal to sum of all the observations divided by total number of observations. We can indicate that by sigma x i divided by n and more particularly what is the indication for the arithmetic mean? Indication for the arithmetic mean is x bar, please do remember that. That is what sum of observations by number of observations. And uh, just now we discussed about the direct method. Have you remembered? Yes, direct method means this is by using this formula. Sigma fi xi divided by sigma fi. That is what is the formula for arithmetic mean by direct method. What is this xi stands for here? xi is equal to what? So, here xi is said to be mid value of the class interval. Otherwise, class mark mid value of the class interval otherwise class mark is indicated by x i. Suppose when you are finding x 1, what do you mean by x 1? Mid value of the first class. Mid value means what? Lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 is the mid value. So, mid value means average of the limits of a particular class is said to be mid value of the class interval otherwise class mark indicated by x i. Of course, fi is nothing but frequency of that particular class interval that is ith class interval. It might be first class interval or second or third whatever it is. So, this is the formula and see here shortcut or assumed mean method. See, assumed mean method in the sense I am going to explain you by taking an example. So, then you will get to know clearly x bar is equal to a plus sigma fi di by sigma fi. Di is called deviation. You see here di is equal to x i minus a that is what called deviation. Okay? And the step deviation method see most probably we use this step deviation method in order to find arithmetic mean of the class inter arithmetic mean of the given particular 
frequency distribution. See, you need to understand one thing here, assumed mean method and step deviation method, both are absolutely similar to each other, but in which cases particularly we use assumed mean method and in which cases we particularly use step deviation method. Step deviation method can be used in any condition. Step deviation method can be used in any condition, but assumed mean method can be used, assumed mean method can be used in any condition, but particularly assumed mean method can be effectively used when the class interval is not same, when the class interval is not same. So, when the class interval is not same, then you can use assumed mean method. When the class interval is not same, better avoid using step deviation method because it will not give effective results when class interval is not same for all the classes. Hope you understand. I repeat once again, when the class interval is not same for all the class intervals, then better use assumed mean method for better results. But if you use step deviation method when the class intervals are not same, then you may not get effective results. That is what is the difference between assumed mean method as well as step deviation method. Okay? So, most probably you will be asked to find out arithmetic mean of a grouped frequency distribution, then you better try to use step deviation method. What do you call that? Step deviation method instead of using assumed mean method. Sometimes you will be asked in problem also that find out the arithmetic mean of the following frequency distribution by assumed mean method or by step deviation method. So, then when you are asked particularly, then definitely you will have to use the prescribed method and whatever the method suggested in your problem. Okay? Fine. So, moving on to median. What do you mean by median of a frequency distribution? And before that, have you remembered what is the median of a raw data? In order to find median of a raw data, the very first thing that you need to do is you will have to arrange the given observations in a particular order of magnitude, either ascending order of magnitude or descending order of magnitude. After arranging them, coming to the second step, identify what is or what are the middlemost numbers. So, suppose if your data consists of odd number of terms, odd number of terms means your data might have 7 number of terms or 9 or 11 or 3 or 5, that is what called odd number of terms. If your data consists of odd number of terms, then definitely you will have one and only one middle value, then that middle value is said to be median of the data. I repeat, after arranging the given observations in a particular order of magnitude, then you will have to see the number of observations is odd, then the middlemost number is said to be the median of the observations. Suppose, if your observations are even number of observations, for example, 20 observations are there, or 10 observations are there, or 14 observations are there, or only 2 observations are there, then in order to find median of the data having even number of observations, then you will get 2 middlemost numbers then take those two middlemost numbers and find out the average of those two middlemost numbers. Then the average of those two middlemost numbers is said to be median of the given data consists of even number of terms. Please do remember those two things. And after that, how to find out median of a group data? This is one of the very important and interesting concepts finding median of a group data and in fact in our board examinations you can expect about 90 percent days that you will get one problem related to median than comparative to mean as well as mode. So, that is what the importance of this. For group data, median is equal to L plus n by 2 minus C f divided by f into h. You will have to remember all these formulas. In this chapter, we have only three formulas for measures of central tendencies. One is for arithmetic mean, one is for median, one is for mode. And you have totally four exercises. First exercise is median, and second exercise, sorry, first exercise is mean, second exercise is mode, third exercise is median, and fourth exercise is graphs. You understand? Right. So, moving on to 
mod what do you mean by mode of a frequency distribution see here mode of a frequency distribution is l plus f1 minus f0 divided by 2f1 minus f0 minus f2 but here you need to understand one thing that what is that f1 f0 f2 what is f1 f0 f2 see here 2f1 minus f0 minus f2 2f1 minus f0 minus f2 see here in this particular mode of the frequency distribution mode of the frequency distribution class intervals will be given as well as the corresponding frequencies also given class intervals and corresponding frequencies when you are given class intervals as well as corresponding frequencies for example the class intervals are 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 these are the class intervals and corresponding frequencies are 3 7 9 1 6 these are the corresponding frequencies now if you observe what is the highest frequency the highest frequency so this is the highest frequency correct so that highest frequency is considered as f1 highest frequency considered as f1 and the frequency preceding to the highest frequency is considered as f0 and the frequency can, um, which is next to that highest frequency is considered as f2 so that is what is about f1 f2 and f0 and what about that l l is said to be the lower boundary i would say the lower boundary of model class what is model class the class with the highest frequency is said to be the model class of course we'll discuss all these things again when we answer the problems okay so this way you can easily figure out what is mode of the frequency distribution and then you need to understand a few more very important points uh, that you know which are very much useful in understanding the concept called measures of central tendencies and in statistics see what is the empirical relationship between all the three measures of central tendencies of course you learnt it in grade 9 even the measures of central tendencies are related with uh, mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean when you are given any two measures of central tendencies and the third measure of central tendency can be obtained by using this empirical relationship between three measures of central tendencies that is mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean understand and after that um, you can you can see uh, obviously all these things and just now we discussed about class mark or mid value of the class interval lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 is class mark otherwise you can call it as mid value of the class interval what do you call that mid value of the class interval and what is the class size class size otherwise length of the class interval also so what is length of the class interval upper limit minus lower limit is the length of the class interval but you need to think a while about this definition upper limit minus lower limit so here sometimes upper limit minus lower limit can give the class interval but not all the time i will explain you how it is and uh, what is the model class and what is the median class we already discussed and we are going to discuss about this OZU also right so let us get into the problems and try to understand how can we do these problems see the very first problem is the problem given to find out arithmetic mean of the frequency distribution the following table represents represent marks obtained by 100 students in a test marks obtained as well as the number of students you are going to find arithmetic mean of the frequency distribution so in order to find the arithmetic mean of the frequency distribution you have three methods what is the first method direct method and what is second method second method is step deviation method and third method is mean deviation method so in order to find this uh, you know arithmetic mean of the frequency distribution i am going to use step deviation method so what is the formula for step deviation method in i in order to find the arithmetic mean that is arithmetic mean is equal to x bar 
which is equal to a plus sigma f i u i divided by sigma f i into h. Now, I would say about every single letter there where a stands for assumed mean. So, the previous method is also there that is assumed mean method, but I am not using that, but a stands for assumed mean or else you can call it as assumed mid value among all the mid values. A can be called as assumed mean, otherwise assumed mid value among all the mid values. You understand? Assumed mean that is and uh, ui, ui is equal to xi minus a divided by h. Of course, you can call xi minus a as the deviation. So, here ui is equal to xi minus a by h, I will write here. A is assumed mid value or assumed mean. Assumed mean and uh, what is that ui there? ui is equal to xi minus a divided by h and the value of h, h is equal to class size you know and sigma fi is going to be sum of all the frequencies. First of all, in order to find the arithmetic mean of the data, first of all what are the logical sequence of steps that I am going to follow. So, the logical sequence of steps are here, first I would write the given information vertically, I am going to prepare a table with these two columns as vertical columns. So, first one marks obtained that I am taking it as class interval and number of students that I am taking it as f i. Okay. So, what are class intervals here? 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45, 45 to 50 and then 50 to 55, 55 to 60 and then 60 to 65. This is the last class interval according to the problem. And what are the corresponding frequencies? The corresponding frequencies are here 14, 16, 28, 23, 18, 8 as well as 3. Okay? So, the very first thing that you need to find here is sum of all the frequencies. These are the frequencies, right? You will have to find sum of all the frequencies indicated by sigma fi. Sigma is the indication for summation. F i means what? F 1 plus F 2 plus F 3 and so on up to whatever the number of frequencies, number of class intervals corresponding frequencies are there. So, sigma F i obviously you do not have to add if you see the problem, 100 students are there, it means sigma F i is going to be 100. Okay? And now the real task begin. In order to find the arithmetic mean of the given frequency distribution, you need to prepare three more columns. Apart from the given two columns, you need to prepare three more columns. So, the very first column is xi. What do you mean by xi? Class mark, otherwise mid value of the class interval. Class mark, otherwise mid value of the class interval. How to find class mark or mid value of the class interval? Please be very careful. Mid value of the first class interval would be lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 lower limit is equal to 30, upper limit is equal to 35 divided by 2. 30 plus 35 is equal to how much? 65 divided by 2. What is 65 divided by 2? 32.5. So, 32.5 would be the mid value of the first class interval. Of course, you can easy, easily identify what can be the middle value from 30 to 35. So, 30 to 35, it would be 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So, 33 is there. So, in this 33, what is the middle, middle number? 32.5. So, 32.5. Similarly, you can find out the middle values of every single class interval, but you be very careful. It is not required to find the mid value for every class interval just by adding lower limit and upper limit divided by 2. It is not required. You know why? If the class intervals are maintaining the uniform class size, uniform class size 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45, 45 to 50, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, 60 to 65. Everywhere the class size is same, that class size is 5. So, what I am supposed to do? I am going to add that 5 to this first mid value 
to get the next mid value. You understand? So, 32 plus 5 is equal to how much? 37.5. Let us check whether 37.5 is the mid value of this class interval or not. Obviously, because 35 plus 40 is equal to 75. The middle number to 75 is 37.5. Got it? Fine. So, now keep doing that. 37.5 plus 5. What is 37 plus 5 is equal to 42. So, that 42.5. What would be the next one? 47.5. What would be the next one? 52.5. The next one. And then 57.5. Next one. 62.5. Right? See, 62.5 is the class mark. Otherwise, mid value of the last class interval. Fine. After finding the mid value of the class intervals or class marks of the class interval, you need to assume one of the mid values among all the mid values as capital A. That is your wish. Even you can consider 32.5 or you can consider 37.5 or you can consider 62.5. Anywhere you can consider capital A as the assumed mid value or assumed mean of the class intervals. Right? See, but for our calculation purpose, for our calculation purpose, better you can see what is the middle number of this x size. For our calculation purpose only, but it is not mandatory at all. Even if you can take 32.5 as capital A, absolutely enough. Absolutely fine. Right? So, but for calculation purpose, I am taking one of the values as capital A. So, those one of the values is going to be, uh, for example, can I take this 47.5? Let this 47.5 is capital A. So, what is that 47.5 here? That is assumed mid value, assumed mid value or assumed mean. Got it? After finding that capital A, now we are going to find out the next column of the class intervals. What is this next column? Next column is going to be ui. I already wrote the formula. What is the formula here? ui is equal to xi minus a divided by h. xi for the first class interval x1. What is x1? x1 is equal to 32.5. And h, h is equal to class size. 35 minus 30 is equal to 5. So, directly we can write class size is equal to 5. And sigma fi also is equal to 100. Okay? Right. Now, xi minus a by h, xi is equal to 32.5 for the first class interval, a is equal to 47.5. So, 32.5 minus 47.5 is equal to how much? 47 minus 32. 47 minus 32 is equal to how much? Um, it would be 15 divided by h, divided by h is equal to 5. So, minus 15 divided by 5 is equal to minus 3. So, it would be minus 3. Similarly, if you find this, it would be minus 2. For this, it would be minus 1. For this, it would be 1, 0. And it would be 1, it would be 2, it would be 3. So, this way, you can find out the values of ui. And in fact, you do not have to use this formula for finding the values of ui. Directly, we can get the value of ui, of course, by using that formula only. But you do not have to do for every single value of ui. You know what has to be done? Wherever the value of capital A that you have already chosen, the value of UI corresponding to the value of A, the value of UI corresponding to the value of A is 0 and the above values are negatives and below values are positives, as simple as that. So, since it is A here 0, then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, whatever, if you have class intervals. And the below values are positives. Please be remember this. And you do not have to use this formula all the time in order to find the value of ui. Got it? Suppose, sir, if I take this one as capital A, then it would be 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. That is it. Suppose, if I take this one as capital A, then it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. As simple as that. Fine? Right. We are almost towards the end of the problem. The final column of this class interval is fi into ui. What is the final column? fi multiplied by ui. It means f1 into u1, f2 into u2, f3 into u3 and so on. fi into ui means f1 into u1. Please be remember, 14 into minus 3, 14 3 is how much? 
42 so it would be minus 42 and then 16 into minus 2 16 2s are how much minus 32 and then 28 into minus 1 is minus 28 of course 23 into 0 is equal to 0 and then 18 into 1 is equal to 18 and then 8 2s are 16 and then 3 3s are 9. So, this way you can find out f i into u i. After finding f i into u i, we need sigma f i into u i. What do you mean by sigma f i into u i? You will have to add all these things. Sigma f i into u i. See here, in order to find the value of sigma f i u i, you might definitely get one doubt. You know what it is? Sir, you said capital A can be taken anywhere. Suppose if I take capital A over here, then I get all these numbers are negative numbers. When all the negative numbers are multiplied by these positive numbers, I will get all negative numbers. When I add all negative numbers, I will get sigma f i u i is equal to negative. Then is there any problem with this negative sign? Absolutely, there is no problem. You are not finding the mean. You are finding just the value of f i into u i. That is not the final value of arithmetic mean. You understand? So, the value of sigma f i u i can be positive or can be negative or can be 0 also. You understand? So, please uh, remember that thing in mind. Now, going to find sigma f i u i. For that, first I will go with all positive numbers and all negative numbers. See, these are all negative numbers and these are all positive numbers. So, coming to first I am going to add all these things. So, 8 plus 2 otherwise 40 plus 30 is equal to 70. 70 plus 20 is equal to 90, 90 plus 10, 100, 102. So, this is negative 102, right? I, I, I count once again. This is 40 plus 30 equal to 70, 70 plus 20 is equal to 90, 90 plus 10 equal to 102 is equal to 102. And coming to this negative, uh, sorry, positive numbers, 10 plus 10 equal to 20, 6 plus 9 is equal to 15, so that uh, 20 plus 15 equal to 35. 35 plus 8 is equal to 43. So, this is positive 43. Got my point? 8 plus otherwise 9 plus 6 is equal to 15. 15 plus 8 is equal to 23. 3, 2, 2 plus 1 equal to 3 plus 1 equal to 4. So, this is 43 and this is minus 102. Of course, ultimately we are getting negative value for sigma f i into u i. How much is that? Minus See, this is minus 102 and this is 43. Let us have a look on this. Uh, what is uh, 102 minus 43? Uh, let us have a look on this. For example, this is 10 or this is 12. So, 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. And now you have only 9. So, 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. Correct? So, minus 59 is the value of sigma f i into u i. Right? So, 9 plus 3 is equal to 12, 2, 1. So, 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. Fine. After finding the values of sigma f i u i, now I am going to substitute everything in this formula. For that, I would write h is equal to 5 and sigma f i is equal to 100 and assumed mean. What is the assumed mean here? Assumed mean is going to be 47.5. So, I would write here 47.5. So, when I substitute everything in the formula, then what do I get here? So, I am going to get the value of x bar is equal to a 47.5, 47.5 plus sigma f i u i is minus 59. So, minus 59 divided by sigma f i. What is sigma f i? Is 100 into h. H is going to be, of course, that is also there into 5. So, now my value is going to be 47.5 minus when I multiply 59 with 5, 5 9s are 45, 5 4, 5 5 is 25 plus 4 is equal to 29 and divided by 100 is there. So, it means 2.95. So, 47.5 divided by sorry 47.5 minus 295 by 100 is equal to 2.95. 2.95. What is the value for this? The value is going to be, I am going to simplify here, 47.50 and 2.95. So, finally, 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. Now, this is 4. 
So, 14 minus 9 is also equal to 5, 5, 1. So, now this is 6, 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. So, 44.55, this is 44.55 is the arithmetic mean of the frequency distribution. So, this way we can find arithmetic mean by using our assumed mean method or step deviation method. Still here we use resumed mean method only because x i minus a is equal to d i we already discussed, but the method that we used here is step deviation method. So, by using step deviation method, it is easier for us to find the arithmetic mean of the given frequency distribution. Hope you understand and enjoyed. Thank you.